back over more than 70 years, I'm reminded of an old saying that the more things change, the less they do. Uh, I grew up in Zimbabwe, or Rhodesia as it then was, with a deep love of Africa's wildlife, but soon after leaving university, I began to realize that habitat destruction, de degradation of land, was the greatest long-term danger to wildlife and also to humans. Now, as was mentioned introducing me, I've worn many hats, researcher, farmer, soldier, politician, international consultant, but no matter what hat I was wearing on any given day, it was always the same problem. Poor land leads to droughts, floods, poor people, social breakdown, abuse of women and children, genocide, cultural genocide, eventually wars, the downfall of civilizations, and more than 20 have failed. And now the threat is global. Today, humanity faces two enormous threats, global desertification and climate change. Never in history have we faced a more grave situation. With agriculture producing way more eroding soil than food and creating the great deserts, it is causing climate change frankly, probably as much, if not more, than fossil fuels. Now, what is most blamed worldwide is, as you know, fossil fuels and livestock for producing methane and causing land degradation, climate change. As the global situation worsens over the years, I've noticed, as probably of you, that every 10 years, roughly, we have a Johannesburg or Rio-type major international conference. At that, the world scientists bemoan the worsening situation. We allocate millions more dollars, make great resolutions, and we proceed with exactly the same failed technologies that are not solving the problem. And this year, it will be repeated, and I guarantee with the same results at Rio Plus 20 in Brazil. Now, mainstream scientists are blaming two things, as I said, and they are only trying to address it with three tools or things various aspects of technology, fire, or resting land to different degrees, and no other tool is considered. Now, if we look at these tools, um, and we look at the oceans, or we look at humid environments, resting land is the most powerful tool known to us to restore biodiversity and full functioning of our environment. If, however, we look at the bulk of the world's land, which is seasonal in rainfall, nature with long dry periods, we find that rest has the opposite effect. This is a long rested piece of land managed by the National Park Service of the United States, over 70 years of rest, and has had hundreds of thousands of dollars spent on technologies to try to stop soil erosion. That desertification is as bad as anything in Africa or China, and this is generally not known. Now, about 20% of the world only is under croplands. About 80% of the world's land is under gr grazing, livestock, other non-agriculture, non-crop production. Okay? And if we look at the most problematic region of the world, right across Africa to Pakistan, where we have the most violence and everything, only 1% to 5% of the land is cropland. All the rest is land that can only support humans with wildlife and so on. Now, these seasonal rainfall environments are the environments from which millions and millions of large herbivores and their pack hunting predators came. And they, over the millennia, maintained the soil because annually billions of tons of vegetation grow and die every single year. And they have to be trampled, cycled, digested, biologically broken down. Otherwise, desertification occurs, as you saw in the earlier uh, picture. Now, in the 1960s, when I began to realize that only livestock now could save humanity, that was counterintuitive, went against every belief we have, and I was faced with a dilemma. We'd had 15,000 years of herding, and it had caused the great deserts of the world. We'd had 100 years of modern science, grazing systems, rotations, and that had accelerated desertification, even in the United States. So what were we to do? We somehow had to deal with the complexity, social, plants, erratic weather, wildlife, all of this stuff. So I just simply turned to the profession that had dealt most with that sort of complexity, the military. And I took 300 years of European experience and their immediate battlefield planning procedures that they developed and adapted it to a biological situation. 
That has worked for 40 years without fail. It is now being practiced on over 40 million acres on four continents. Right? And these pictures are examples of desertification being reversed with greatly increased livestock mimicking nature through that planning process. And they're all, the circle is to show you the exact same spot because the change is so profound when we do this. Right, so where does this leave us? We have three tools being used. Two of them cause desertification. One can never even imaginably replace livestock and the scale required at the frequency required globally. Only livestock can do what is required. I've been demonstrating this, explaining this, and the science behind it for nearly 50 years. And I've been saying repeatedly, and I say it again, I'll stake my life on it. We will not be able to address climate change using the only tools that scientists are considering, and the entire future of humanity and of civilization as we know it hangs on the slender thread of learning how to livestock, manage livestock properly to mimic nature. Thank you.